Well, they happen at the same same day in the same year. From I believe eight to eleven, it's the WWE Elimination Chamber versus the NBA All Stars. Which was the better event? Which was more entertaining? Well, I for one am going to say that in both events. I wasn't really pleased. For starters, I really wanted the East to win in the NBA All-Stars. Yet, the West ultimately got it. I, I think they got it, at least. And it was just such a nasty scrape because any moment where it seemed like the East was... A step ahead, finally taking the lead. The West took two steps ahead. And it's such a contrast from the beginning and the first half of the season that it really disturbs me. Moreover than that, I just don't really like the halftime performance between Alicia Keys why was she singing New York in Houston, Texas? Can somebody please explain this to me? I mean, is every place in the world New York now, you stupid bitch? God damn, you and Beyonce can both suck my dick. I'm not even fucking lying. Dude, just because I said that, it's pro it's pro video's probably gonna get viral and shit, and I don't want that to happen, but... I wouldn't take it back, even if they... Fucking try to hang me for saying that. Both these bitches can suck a dick. Fuck them. Sluminati ass trifling bitch Beyonce. <laughs> New York, New York can suck a dick. Wait, fucking Alicia Keys can suck a dick just for singing that New York song in Houston, Texas. I'm a New Yorker. That's why I wanted an East win. My little bro is a Knicks fan. I'm a Bulls fan, if you've noticed. However, <laughs> there is no reason for you to do that song. You got so many other hit songs that you did after that. With these pop artists, they like to make a compilation of their all, all their hit songs so that they can make this big halftime performance. It's what Beyonce does. It's what a lot of artists do. But... That's like that one song you can take out and replace with something else. Makes no sense. What else? Hmm. Well, going over the other... The Devil I Do Know a lot more. The Elimination Chamber. Let's see. Match contained... A Divas match nobody gave a fuck about, which was Caitlyn versus Tamina, which only lasted three minutes. I like Caitlyn, and I like Tamina because I like her fodder. So, this match should have been a lot better, but it was only three minutes long. The Divas division is a dying division. If I actually became the chairman of the company, which never will happen, the first thing I'll take out is the Divas division. There's a lot of reasons for that some of it is my speculation on the health problems it has for females and the other is just that it's not really drawing in money and you have these crappy ass three minute matches that are sometimes really botchy what's next a lot of people were pissed off as the Miz versus Antonio Cesaro match yet they're saying as, just when it was getting good, the match was over because Cesaro pretended he got his nuts kicked and Lil Nate, the referee, bought into it and ended the match giving Cesaro the victory via disqualification. Honestly, if you got excited for a Miz match, even for a split second, you are a complete and total virgin idiot and you should fucking end your own life. Because you have no taste in wrestling and you're mad 
and sulking and piss over it, if you have no taste in it. So, it's like being opinionated and your opinions suck. It's not a good combo. Uh, what's next? I drooled a little. Well, other than that, Big Show beat fucking Del Rio, and I'm okay with that. Uh, no, I mean, Del Rio beat the Big Show. Maybe that was a Freudian slip. The subconscious of me was hoping the Big Show would win, probably. That would have probably made the main event of WrestleMania more interesting. But, quite frankly, I don't really care about that. It is a dying feud. Both Del Rio and Big Show were scurrying for the title back in 2012. And it just shows us how much of a dying championship the World Heavyweight title is. To put it frankly, the World Heavyweight title is what the Intercontinental title was in the start of the 2000s where it was going from the mid to main event level title all the way to the beginning of the match starting at WrestleMania 2001 with Jericho versus William Regal. So now it's an opening match thing. And the Intercontinental title is rarely on pay-per-views now, so I can imagine that in another decade we won't even see the World Heavyweight title belt on TV. And that can scare me considering what it means for the Intercontinental one. Think about that a little bit. Okay, Jack Swagger won the Elimination Chamber, which means that he's going on to face... Alberto Del Rio, which means that it's not even going to be an interesting world title match because you don't got two heavily popular guys. I'm feeling what Del Rio did in his MMA career, who he was trained by, what that means, and the fact that he's a traditional heel and a traditional character, which doesn't fit the new, new school vibe of indie and developmental stars. I'll describe the new talents as being institutionalized if they've spent more than a year in the developmental scene, but because that's how they act like. In many ways, the FCWs, OVWs, and NXTs kind of act like the colleges of wrestling promotions. You come out of it more generic than when you entered. And, and it really does bother me because... It has so much potential, it's kind of like back in the days with the regional titles and things of that nature, where you were given wrestling school, you were given these little abilities, but now they just do it to make these characters more generic than when they entered. And that bothers me, that's why I hate NXT and... I remember a comment responded to that saying, you have bad taste because Seth Rollins is beast, Dean Ambrose is beast, Cassius Ono slash Chris Hero is beast, and now they got El Generico, and I like El Generico, but you know what, I don't really give a fuck. You come out more generic than when you left. And Jack Swagger's got a traditional heel character coming too with this heel version of Kurt Angle or slash Hulk Hogan. Well, Kurt Angle was already mostly heel anyway, but just this return to white America racist right wing promo. And I'm a right wing guy, so I'm feeling that. I'm feeling Zeb, but quite frankly, I don't care for them facing. And of course, Rock had to be Punk. Now, what did surprise me was the triple threat match between fucking The Shield and the three baby faces, Ryback, Cena, and Sheamus. Because these people are heading off to main events in WrestleMania, yet somehow The Shield kicked their ass. 
And that's leaving me wondering, what are they going to do with Ryback and Sheamus since they're not going to go for a title? And what are they going to do with Orton and... We're pretty sure Jericho's going to face Ziggler. Speaking of which, Ziggler did win a match that was not called for, wasn't expected. All in all, the lesser of two evils. I forgot in the All-Stars game, there were a lot of different competitions yesterday. The slam dunk contest, the three-pointer contest. A lot of people complained that they were boring and things of that nature. And when I look back at older YouTube videos, since I've just recently gone into the NBA, by going into I mean became a fan of it, looking at the older shows and things of that nature, I'm not surprised that people are going to find this one a little more generic, a little more boring. And I don't blame it on the talent. Because there is a lot of stuff that you got to calculate for when... You do do these shows as whoever's in charge of these. The location, how you're going to plan everything out. Who's going to be the halftime performance? Who's going to be, let's see, just, just the order of everything. How you're going to make things exciting. The little details, aesthetics. It's got to come together beautifully. And if it doesn't, then it sucks. It's like when they took the Seattle Sonics and turned them into the Oklahoma City Thunders, they did it because no one was showing up in Seattle to, for the games. And so certain things really do help. Little things add up. So, of course, maybe they made the product a lot more generic, uninspired. They definitely shouldn't have put Alicia Keys on the halftime. And all in all, I really do dislike both of these shows. However, for the lesser of two evils, I'm going to have to give it to the Elimination Chamber because they had Ziggler beat Kofi Kingston. They had The Shield beat Cena, Ryback, and Sheamus. So they did do some things correctly. And most importantly, they didn't have fucking Alicia Keys in the halftime of the fucking Elimination Chamber. Didn't have that kind of shit that would ruin it. Granted, while I hate both of these shows, I definitely preferred them over the fucking Super Bowl, which was two weeks prior to both these events. Exactly two weeks, I believe. Because you didn't have that Beyonce Illuminati performance that made everyone beat their meats, including the females, especially the libtard fags. No offense for homosexuals if I use that word. You're too good to like Beyonce. <laughs> Alright, guys. Peace.